Alright, so we are going to talk about templates now. Um, in the previous video we looked at uh, making a title block and we're going to look at making a template in this one. Um, the first thing I want to do is show you a Revit file tree um, and give you an idea of sort of what we're working towards. So if this is a Revit project, right, where we would be doing most of our drawings and then creating different outputs for that, if we go upstream, what we've been working on is sort of setting up a Revit title block using a Revit title block template, creating a Revit title block, which is a Revit family. And then we're going to now work on this Revit template, which is an RTE file, which you then use to start a Revit project. So you get to set up all your custom characteristics here be it, um, you know, you might have one residential, one construction, you might have a particular template for a particular client, but it's just setting up characteristics to create a Revit project that you can use over and over again. So I just wanted to show you sort of that basic outline of what we're doing. All right, so for those of you in my class, we're going to start with uh, the custom template that I gave you. If you're not in the class, you can always go to new and start a new project template using the architecture template um, and follow along with that if you want to. All right, so I'm going to open up this custom template here. All right, once you get that template open, I would just recommend doing a save as. So I'm going to go over here under the Revit application. I'm going to go to save as template. Okay, and then I'm going to navigate to my custom library and then go use the up arrow. And if you'll remember, we saved a custom templates in the Revit 2014 folder. And just double click on that and save that with the naming convention that I gave you. Okay, so I'm just going to name this custom template working. Okay, save that. All right, now you may notice if you're familiar with Revit that these are different than the typical Revit elevation markers. Um, we're open on level one, so these are elevation markers. I think it's fine if you start with the Revit out of the box stuff. The purpose of this is to show you how you can start to customize things to make things unique. So the first thing we're going to do is very simple. We're going to make some new text types and some new dimension types. Um, so if you go to annotate, you have text panel here. And there's a, an arrow at the bottom right. I would recommend clicking these whenever you see them. There's usually a lot of useful information under there. So I'm going to left click on that. And it is going to bring up my type properties. You're going to see system family text. You're going to be working with families and duplicating to make different types of families. A system family is something that only exists within the Revit template or the Revit project. All right. So um, there's quarter inch Arial, which is the default text that loads with Revit. If you go to the pull down, you can see that I've made a couple of new text types in here. So we'll just go ahead and make one just so you can see how it's done. It's quite simple. You just duplicate the existing, give it a name that is descriptive. And click OK and then set it up. So following my naming, red, we'll make this half an inch and we'll make it bold and we will make it century gothic. Right? We'll click OK. Now if I go to create some text, in this pull down, which is called the type selector, right? Now I have option to use that half inch century gothic red bold. Okay. So what you want to do is set up the different text types that you want to use within your projects. You have access with, to them and you don't have to set them up each time. All right. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is show you a similar thing. You have dimension types. So if I go to annotate again, you have a dimension panel. And if you go to that down arrow, it lists all the different dimension families. 
And so if I pick linear dimension type, which covers linear and aligned, it's going to bring up a dialog box that is very similar, and you're going to do a very similar thing. Again, in the pull down, I've created a century gothic one for me. Um, and you can go ahead and duplicate here and create a new one. And we'll just stick with the red. And you can see here all of the different things you can control with the dimension, with the linear dimension. I'm going to change my color to red. And I'm going to change my font to Century Gothic. OK. And now I click OK. And if I go to the pull down, sorry, if I go to Align Dimension, you will see that I have that option available to me. Now, um, one of the things that is a bit annoying is that you have to go into each one of these families and change and make that new um, type for each one. All right, so just changing one doesn't change all the rest of them. So that's a little bit um, of a long road around, but nevertheless. All right, there's a, another place where you may want to go under the Manage tab that has a lot of settings. Um, additional settings. You have fill patterns. I'm not going to go through each one of these right now, but here's where a lot of sort of your general settings live. So line weights, line patterns. You can add new line styles. Um, the callout tags, the elevation tags, section tags. We're going to talk about those a little bit later and you can kind of take that logic and apply it to some other things. Okay. All right. So for this installment, that's all we're going to talk about. Uh, the next time we'll talk about level heads. All right.